Hi, hi, friends. I'm back after a brief hiatus as well because I've been spending most of my time building this video. And we're going to be talking about racing games in Power Apps, more specifically 3D racing games in Power Apps. What? I hear you say, but Scott, you can't do 3D games in Power Apps. Mixed reality is great and all that, but, you know, forklifts uh, for another time. I've revisited a childhood passion of mine, racing games. So we're going to try and build a 3D version, I introduce you to Power Laps. So you might remember that I've built Power Apps games in the past, like Lemmings and Power Flappy, and although they're the kind of fun to play, the real reason I build this stuff is that you learn a ton doing it that you may or may not use in business apps. And if you've not tried, you totally should. It'll certainly take your power FX skills to the next level. I mean, I used to hang around those video game arcades in the 80s. I used to stuff endless coins into those arcade games. And one of those was Outrun. I don't know if you remember it, but it was iconic at the time. You would sit in it and it kind of looked like a Ferrari and you could change the radio to select different tunes. There was something about that mind crushing sound of all these games with their sound turned up to 11. That unique smell of popcorn and candy floss. Outrun was just amazing. I'd not seen anything like it before. It looked so realistic to me as a geeky teenager, especially when the road would split into different parts and you take different routes through the track. Obviously, it's a long way from modern games like Gran Turismo, which are like hyper realistic with like ray tracing. But 8 bit games have had somewhat of a renaissance recently. So we're going to build something very similar to that. And you got to pick up coins, Minion Rush esque, avoid barriers and stuff. And there's going to be some interesting challenges. How do you realistically create a 3D road with like hills in power apps? And how do you project sprites onto that road and detect collisions? And how do you do this stuff fast enough so it's actually playable as a game in power? -up? But first, we need a track. I'm going to create each segment of a specific length and I'm going to rotate it gradually using basic geometry. And when I say basic, I mean I don't really want to go into explain it. What we'll end up with is hills and straights and chicanes. And each of those segments will have an X, Y, and a Z coordinate. Cue the track building montage. The fun doesn't stop, does it? Not really a game. What we need to do is project that into 3D so we can feel like we're racing. I remember when I was building these games back in the day, trying to emulate OutRun. I spent a lot of my childhood trying to do this kind of stuff. And I was using assembly language and the fastest way to do that was to use raster graphics. So basically you're writing our horizontal lines into memory and slicing that road up into little tiny slices. And as you go around curves, you move each of those slices. Now vector graphics is how we do graphics in Power Apps because you can create an image and you can put an SVG into that image. And SVG obviously stands for Scalar Vector Graphics. So let's use SVG to draw these lines on the screen. Yeah, and even by my lowered standards, this, this really doesn't look great. And my kids don't help matters because they keep coming up to me and saying, that looks horrible, dad. Their expectations are like really high, most higher than, what am I trying to say? Hang on, let me chat GPT this. Due to the numerous bug and issues it contains. That's cutting. Actually, I don't know why I feel like I need to impress them with this little side project. So I need a different approach. I can use Copilot perhaps, create JavaScript for a 3D racetrack. And not unexpectedly, this isn't going to go any further than that. I think let's just leave that. It's like tons of these little projects out there. People have been doing the same thing, but they're all using 3D libraries like WebGL and DirectX and OpenGL. And, and they do all of the heavy lifting for you. Problem is we can't use WebGL or any of these other 3D libraries in Power Apps unless we use a PCF component, ProCode, and there's really no reason to do this if we're going to use pro code because we might as well go and do it in JavaScript. We have to be able to do it in PowerFX. So when viewing a 3D scene, you can think of it as like a computer screen as a window. It's flat unless you have one of those cool wraparound monitors. The objects behind the window outside are projected onto the screen as the lines pass through it. And you could think of projecting 
in, from 3D is very, very similar. You take these 3D coordinates and then you have to work out where the pixels lie on the window, which is your screen. We use something called matrix maths, but there is no way on earth that I'm gonna be able to do this in PowerFX. To get a high frame rate, we're gonna have to cheat. And luckily, if we assume that all the objects are facing the camera and then the camera is always facing towards the road, it removes all of this matrix math shenanigans and the results is something actually super simple. In this diagram, which is from Wikipedia, the blue cross is the point on the screen that we need to find the x, y, which is b, x. And the yellow object is at view coordinates a, x. b, z is the distance of the screen or window that we project onto from the camera. So b, x equals a, x times b, z over a, z. This is a formula that we can easily use in PowerFX. And you can do the same thing for the y coordinates. Uh, you're still there? You've not gone? Please come back. So let's try this on the road. Road. Wow, I've driven on roads like this in Canada, almost doze off without the help of energy drinks. I feel like I need an energy drink to keep me going on this project. If there were mountains in the way, we need hills and curves. And luckily we can cheat with this too by using an accumulation of that curve technique. And I found a really good explanation of that here. So PowerFX is basically XL++++++. And let's build a spreadsheet to do the maths and check it all works out. Now here are the curve values and there's also the Y value, which is the distance up the screen that we're rendering. And what we can then do is we can take those two things and find the X value of the curve. And you can see here, there's that very similar formula. And look, you end up with a graph and it kind of looks like a road. Hey, we could just build a driving game in Excel. No, I don't think that's going to work. In a traditional loop, like in JavaScript or, you know, any other language, you'd simply adjust the variable as you go down. So you can see here we're incrementing the dx value and, and incrementing it by adding on the previous value. And in PowerFX, that actually poses a bit of a problem because you can't update variables inside a loop. Uh, because set and update context aren't available. But what we can do is we can use collect. So, and I found that actually using that is quite quick. There are other ways of doing it because like I could each iteration, I could filter and I could do a sum of all the previous values, but that turns out to be really, really super slow. So, so now I've got a way of incrementing this curve value each time I draw a segment. And this actually ends up with something kind of looking realistic, don't you think? Well, I mean, obviously, if you were in Tron, but the same can be applied for hills. So what we can do is as we're going up the hill, we increment the, the Y value of the hill. And uh, now this looks like I'm in some kind of wormhole. Um, so what we need to do is we also need to, if the road is behind the hill in front of us, we need to clip it. So what we can say is if that road goes below the maximum Y value that we've hit, we no longer draw it. So, yeah, this is good. We look, we got word. This is this guy kind of like a roller coaster here. And yeah, it's starting to feel a bit queasy now. Second challenge, frame rates. If you talk to any gamers, full disclosure here, I am not a real gamer, but they will tell you, you need way more than 60 frames per second to make stuff look good. Now, apparently the eye can't tell more than 60 frames per second. There seems to be some disagreement about this. Something's to do with screen shearing and we're never going to get anywhere near 60 frames per second. But if you've done anything with timers, you'll know that timers are the way to run some code at a certain interval. Um, the problem is, as you reduce the duration of that timer, you start to find that as it gets below sort of 500 milliseconds, actually, it's not really running every 500 milliseconds. If you set it to 100 milliseconds, it's going to run sometimes more than that, sometimes less than that. It, what we need to do is, in order to make sure that our car is going to run at the same speed, we need to make sure that we're not just simply incrementing the same amount along the track each time the timer ticks. We need to calculate a relative amount based on the amount of duration of time since the last tick. So once we've done that, it kind of looks somewhat glitchy, but at least the speed isn't changing that much with the frames per second. Glitch, yeah, glitch, it's... Mm. But the third challenge that I've got here is how do we get 
sprites on here. We've got X and Y for each of these segments, so we can easily place the sprites on the road because we know where the sides of the roads are in X and Y. And if we paint the road, we go from the front to the back, but the sprites need to be painted in reverse order because the stuff in the front needs to overlap the stuff in the back. So we need a separate loop to paint the sprites than spr painting the actual road. Now, since we're using SVG, scalar vector graphics, everything needs to be vectorized. We can't use bitmaps. Red rectangles are great, but mm, I'm pushing the boundaries and I'm really quite committed at this point. I know going back. Now, there's loads of tools that you can use to create SVGs. I mean, even PowerPoint can do it if you save the image of an SVG. But I thought I'd take some time to learn Adobe Illustrator. And it turns out to be pretty easy and really good at creating SVGs, especially for optimizing them and making sure that they use the fewest number of points possible. Coins, collect them all. Gotta keep, hang on, I can see through those hills. We've got, we've got transparent hills, this is not good. So we've also got to clip the sprites if they are hidden behind a hill, just in the same way as we were with painting the road, which is easy because we've already got that maximum height at that point in the segment on the road. This is the maximum height. So it's looking half decent, don't you think? So we need to like some other stuff to make it cool. Like let's put the track on there and a position on the track and the speedo. I'm not gonna tell you how long it took me to put glows on the speedo and you know these are hours I'm never going to get back but I think it's worth it well I'm going to keep telling myself that it's worth it anyway so lastly we need to squeeze out that last bit of performance make the frame rate as high as possible and one of the things I've noticed that once you publish this thing it's going to run quicker than when you run it in studio given there are going loads of things going on here if the whole screen was redrawn with each frame it would cause things to take longer than we needed even if they're not moving what I did is I split it down into the first scene the main scene and then the player on top of that which doesn't move very often and then the dashboard which went and then other stuff like traffic lights, which just really isn't there for very long. So it's looking pretty good. I give you power laps. All we need now is just to add an AI generated logo, uh, nitro power ups. Bingo, we've got a driving game. Red, green, and we're off. So nitro, maximum speed now. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna go through barriers, I'm gonna go through trees, and I'm gonna go through buildings even. It takes a little while to now off-road, but I can go through it's run out, so I'm gonna hit barriers now. I have to avoid them. Uh, <laughs> that was a narrow miss. This is cool. I like I love the bridges. They have a really good I got the shadow, so it kind of looks really realistic. And I've kind of put the buildings in. I've got to get through the middle of those. I, I, I always hit those. It's pretty awesome that I got through them. Oh no, right, there we go. I hit them just like that buildings make you feel like you're going through little kind of towns and stuff which is cool the day you see there is another town here there's another nitro so let's get that nitro and maximum speed so you can collect as many coins as possible so i'm kind of coming into a really hard right now so i've got centrifugal force so as you go around really hard corners then it becomes difficult to steer now we're in the final stretch back over the over the line and I can get that final nitro so my lap two two minutes 52 my eldest son just back from uni for the summer just asked are you playing your own game now I feel seen so best stop now you can grab the code here and take power laps for a test drive let me know what you think in the comments and please subscribe and you can hear about my next video so a few announcements then i'm going to be speaking at the upcoming european and power platform conference in dublin so if you're there i'd love to hang out and talk about 80s style video games if that's your thing and i'm also going to be running a pcf control workshop at the power platform conference in vegas i would love to see you there there's going to be lots of amazing speakers and it's going to be loads and loads of fun and if you can't make it to that I'll also be running a pcf workshop at the south coast summit in the uk and that's going to be a load of fun as well so it'll be great to see you so all remains is to say thank you for watching and until next time cheers